Bonjour les amis. Bonjour. Welcome to the Loire Valley. Another day, another virtual tour. We are in the cloister of a world-renowned abbey known as the Abbey of Fontevraud. It's located in the Loire Valley at the intersection of several old provinces here, the Anjou, the Touraine, I'm starting in the cloister. It won't be a very long tour, but I wanted you to enjoy this. What you're seeing here was built a long, long time ago in the 12th century. 12th century. This is a place that's almost a thousand years old. We are in the cloister. I'm not sure how good the cell signal is going to be through this, so I'll have to move pretty fast. <laughs> Yesterday, I took you to one of the most renowned chateaux in the Loire Valley, Azé le Rideau. Today we are in the largest monastic abbey in Europe. There's a room here I want you to see. It's called the chapter room. It was added much later in the 16th century. I will tell you a little bit more about this abbey. But I mean, the door is so spectacular. I had to show it to you. Bonjour and welcome, friends. This is also impromptu. I took another road trip. <laughs> I'm going to try and step in, hoping the signal will stay on for me. I want you to see how richly decorated this room is. The chapter room is where the community of the abbey, monks and nuns would meet every day, where meetings, important meetings took place as well. Very richly decorated with paintings representing the passion of the Christ and the resurrection. This whole complex is in the Romanesque style. Like I mentioned, it was built in the 12th century, though they worked on it through the centuries afterwards. And this room was added in the 16th century in the Renaissance, which is the time period we discussed yesterday in Azé le Rideau. This is the cloister where we were earlier. And on the side here is the famous church of Fontevraud. It's massive. We will see it from outside a little better. I need to tell you a little bit more about the story of this place. Pretty drafty area. They're doing some work here. And that's one of the uh, things you see when you visit these places off season. This is when they spruce them up and work on them and make them look better. On the left here is the treasury room, the former treasury room, but it's extremely dark, so I won't even step inside it. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying this. The weather was holding up until the rain returns tomorrow, so I decided to take another road trip. Here is the courtyard. And on the side here, we have a small chapel, recently renovated as well, named after Saint-Benoît. The courtyard is also named after Saint-Benoît. And here in Fontevraud, this giant city, really, this monastery, we have um, art as well that's displayed throughout the courtyards and the gardens. You can see in the center here, there are some pieces of contemporary art. Let's try and go under this porch here. So 
So Fontevraud, the story of this place is quite fascinating. A man created it in the very, very early 12th century, the 1100s. And he believed in the Benedictine order. He believed in hard work, in prayer, in poverty. And this is how this started. And he led the abbey for many years. But before he died, he did something quite revolutionary at the time. He assigned a woman to the job of leading the monastery. Her first name was Petronil, and she was a widow. She had been married. He wanted her to have life experience. And the tradition remained. Through the centuries, 36 women, abbesses, ran this place. And they led the men here, the monks, and the nuns as well. Until the French Revolution, when, as you can imagine, everything went downhill pretty fast. The last nuns left in 1792, the last abbess as well. This is the back of the beautiful church. I will tell you a little bit more about it in a second. We are right where the apse is. This church has very, very tall ceilings, quite impressive, very sober to inside. Um, Romanesque architecture, like I was saying, but what it's really well known for is because this place in the 12th century became the necropolis of a dynasty, the Plantagenet family. The Plantagenet, who came from England and ruled England and a large chunk of what we would call France today, all of Western France and Southwestern France as well. And all of this happened because a French queen named Alionor of Aquitaine divorced her first husband, which was also revolutionary at the time. Look at the beautiful scenery. And then married the man who would become the King of England from the Plantagenet family, Henry II. They had 10 children. Several of their sons ruled and became kings. You've all heard of Richard, Richard the Lionheart or Jean Sans Terre. Landless John, King John. Eleanor of Aquitaine loved this area, and when her husband died, Henry II, she decided that the Plantagenet dynasty needed to have a necropolis, just like the kings of France had in Saint Denis, Cathedral Saint Denis outside Paris. And so she buried her husband here, her favorite son, who was Richard the Lionheart when he died, and uh, she finally retired here and died here. So if you go inside this church I'm showing you right now, you can find the Gison, that's spelled G-I-S-A-N-T-S, -S, which is the recumbent statues of Eleanor of Aquitaine. Her husband, her son, Richard the Lionheart, they're all inside the church. There used to be more of them in here, but this is where they are now. And look at this. You can see high walls. Early on, Eleanor wanted uh, the abbey to be protected. Remember, those were the Middle Ages. And walls, successive walls were constructed. You had gates to go in. You see one over there. That one was added in the 16th century. But what happened to the abbey after the French Revolution is quite interesting. Nobody would buy it. They tried to sell it off. The nuns left. And uh, what happened was Napoleon, who had come to power by then, early 19th century, decided to turn this incredible place into a prison jail. And it took 10 years of work. And by 1814, it opened. This incredible place became jail. And you can imagine what damage was done to the structure of some of the buildings to accommodate up to 2,000 prisoners. It remained a jail from 1814 all the way to 1963, when it was finally closed. And it was a terrible place. It had the reputation of being one of the strictest, most unpleasant penitentiaries, if you want, or jails that you could find in France. So from a, an incredible abbey uh, open, or, you know, that started in the 12th century, the place becomes a jail. And then in the 1970s, the arts take over. The Plantagenet family um, and the abbesses who ran this place for centuries all were patrons of the arts. They helped poets, writers, musicians, 
Eleonora of Aquitaine herself was really, uh, she was very proud of that. In fact, if you look at her, the statue, her recumbent statue in there, her gisant, she's lying, uh, she's lying down, of course, and she's holding a book, which was quite unusual at the time. And so in the 70s, this place became an exhibit place. The arts were welcome here and have been since. And they are, um, there's modern art exhibited through the gardens. You see a lot of art here. And I will tell you a little bit more about the museum. Right now they have a project also that they started. They're trying to replace the bells of the abbey. Uh, you see up there the uh, bell tower. The sound of the bells wasn't quite what it was supposed to be, so they started a fundraising campaign to create new bells, new bells for the abbey. And so far they've made two. The second one is named Richard, and they've, they're going to ask contemporary artists to um, melt, to create those bells. The bells will be exhibited through the grounds until the six bells are ready to go. So there is one here, I'm going to show it to you. There is one up there as well. You can tell from the uh, circular shape of this thing, just the same as here. So this bell is called Richard. It was inaugurated in, uh, well, I don't know if you say inaugurated, let's say it was christened in 1921 this year. You see how it says, Abbey Royale de Fontevraud, and the date is on it, and its name is Richard. Isn't it beautiful? So four more bells are going to be made. Here's the date. Meet Richard. So eventually Richard and his friends are going to go all the way up there, or at least I think that's where they're going, in the bell tower, and they'll be ringing just like they used to, just like those bells used to, when this place was a magnificent a monastery, a city really. Massive grounds, acres and acres of land and buildings. So let's see. I'm going to take a little spin around to show you what else is there and hopefully when you come back to the Loire Valley and you're chateaued out, you've seen too many chateaux, you might, you might decide to come here at uh, Fontevraud. I'm going to need to go under there. Whoops! Here we go. Now the good, the good news is you can spend the night in this incredible place. Just like in Mont Saint-Michel, you know the Mont Saint-Michel, this architectural marvel on an island in Normandy? You can do this here, you can stay in a hotel that used to be a priory on the grounds. And if you stay in the hotel, you basically can walk around at night, enjoy the entire abbey, and they light it up really nicely, let me tell you. <laughs> They're really funny. They go around with these little uh, golf carts. And in fact, she's carrying uh, bags from the parking lot for people who are going to stay at the hotel in that direction. Here's another peek at the back, the apse of the church of the abbey, where uh, Eleonora of Aquitaine, as well as her husband and one of her son, Richard uh, the Lionheart, are buried. So I looked up the prices of the hotel earlier and apparently you can spend a night here for a little under a hundred euros in December. I think they are sold out for Christmas and New Year's, but uh, there were rooms available through December for less than a hundred euros a night. So if you've ever wondered what it would be like to lead the monastic life, to wake up or to walk around at night in a monastery, on the grounds of a monastery, you can do that here in Fontevraud, thanks to the hotel. Look at the grounds. And they go towards that wall. So the wall, of course, was raised again when the place became a jail. From the early 19th century to the 1960s. And nobody could escape. I think there was one successful escape. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Véronique Véro. I am a tour guide and these days a virtual tour guide. I like to take this community, friends with Véro, all my friends in the community around with me when I travel or when I explore my uh, backyard in this case, since I live in the, Noir, in the Loire Valley. 
So in front of us would have been the priory that belonged to the abbey. And right here, where the chapel was, is a restaurant. It's actually a Michelin starred restaurant. It belongs to the hotel and the hotel is in front of us in the old priory buildings. So you can park on site and they have those little golf carts to help you carry your bags to the hotel. And like I said, art is everywhere here. Usually contemporary art, you have a structure here. I see some of my friends have just joined. Welcome, bonjour. There's another structure over there. These are rooms that belong to the hotel. They have their own little patio outside. The weather is turning, that's a shame because it was really sunny earlier, but the rain is rolling in soon. C'est la vie. So let's walk up this way. Again, it's a massive, I would use the word compound or complex. It's a massive place. So I didn't walk everywhere, but I tried to see as much as I could. The church, of course, where Eleanor of Aquitaine is. There's a great exhibit on the Plantagenet family. So for history buffs, this was really interesting for me to go to that exhibit. I like the shape of this wall. It's a little slanted, do you see? So they're having a series of concerts starting soon and they're going to decorate also for the holidays. So a lot of work is going on right now. I could hear some singing earlier, which added to the experience, of course. I know it's a little early for some of you. It's also Thanksgiving weekend in the United States, so everybody's busy. Hopefully some of you will catch the replay later. When we started, we were in the cloister and the cloister stands on the other side of that wall. And this building here was the refectory. So the cafeteria, if you prefer, this is where the monks and the nuns would eat. On the left is the potager. They had everything they needed to live here and survive. Water, food, nothing much to the potager right now, but it's winter almost. I'll come back in the spring. I'm sure it'll wake up. I just want you to enjoy this glorious scenery. We are in the Anjou here, the region known as Anjou, A-N-J-O-U. The city of Saumur is not too far from us, but the scenery is just glorious. There's a very famous regional park nearby. This is the hotel we just walked past, the restaurant, the former priory. There's a group going inside that building. So they have restaurants on site if you come for the day. There is a bar à vin in the bar, uh, at the back there, you see? Bar à vin, it's like a wine bar and you can have apéro there. There's a little snack place in front of us, la terrasse where I had lunch. It was the only one open. And I'm, going, I'm about to show you, before we wrap up, one of the most interesting buildings here, which is this one. Now, if I were to ask you what you think this building is, what would you say? What do you think this building is? I'm asking because for a really long time they weren't really sure what it was. And they did some excavations and some research, and they finally figured it out. This, my friends, is the former kitchens, or I should say are the former kitchens. There were two, 200, oh, a dovecote. Yeah, see, no, it's not a chapel. I know it's hard to guess, but what you're looking at, see all these little chimneys on the side? You're looking at a kitchen hood. So basically this building was the kitchen were the kitchens. This is where they cooked. The refectory is right behind it. And this was quite unique 
for the time because typically the kitchens and uh, chateaus would have been the same. The kitchens might have been downstairs, but here not only is it out here in the open, it's also a separate building. So I went inside, they are um, working on it. This is the first building that was renovated in the early uh, 1900s. In fact, um, someone who had worked with Eugène Violet le Duc, the famed architect, uh, worked on this and started cleaning it up. If you Google it, you will see photos of it before they cleaned up the roof. It looks really different. So it was the first one of the first places to be renovated, but it was really showing its age. And in the last few years, they've been really working. You can see that the facades are pretty immaculate. This place is maintained very, very well. There's a whole crew working here. Golf cart beeping. <laughs> I've never seen a kitchen like that myself. And inside it's all empty. Um, very Romanesque architecture inside, so quite sober in style. Um, and they're working on the walls right now, fixing them up. But on the outside is where the show is really. Once you know it's a kitchen, it totally makes sense that these um, fireplaces, I guess those vents, would be stuck out there. So as we come back around, and not all the buildings, by the way, are open to the public, like the ones on the left, I'm not supposed to go in. Of course, I was tempted to go, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, not all the buildings are open, but there's plenty to keep you busy here visiting the Abbey, especially if there's an exhibit like the one on the Plantagenet for, uh, I'd say a couple of hours at least. Here's the church. There's a great view of the church. So we started at the foot of this church in the cloister on the right hand side there. And here's the um, actual church where um, Eleanor of Aquitaine, her husband and one of her sons are buried. The necropolis of the Plantagenet dynasty. I learned a lot from that exhibit, so I'm really glad I went. This is one of the reasons I drove here today. It's about a 45 to 50 minute drive from Tours, where I live. Isn't that beautiful? So I said this place was now dedicated to the arts. From, so from a, a monastery for centuries and centuries, then turned into a jail after the French Revolution and then back to a cultural center, a center of the arts. Um, there is a brand new museum on site that opened right before the summer. It's a museum of modern art and it got started thanks to a very generous donation by a couple who had uh, collected a lot of art since the end of World War II. So this is the entrance and the exit and inside that building on the other side is the Museum of Modern Art. So I bought a combo ticket and I am now going to go visit the museum. Apparently that couple's collection was uh, out of this world, so I'm really impatient to see what Fontrevaux uh, recovered. There's a pretty little house here. Isn't this pretty? Here is a good place to uh, pay my uh, <laughs> my respects and say goodbye. It's very chilly, so uh, ooh, my nose is a little red. I want to thank you for being here today and joining me for another impromptu uh, virtual tour at the magnificent Abbey de Fontevraud. I have many more stories to tell, but it's getting cold and I need to go see that museum before driving back to tour. So I'm going to leave you now. I'll be sharing pictures later. I've taken a lot of photos, but if you ever have a chance to come and see this, you have to. It's, it's just an incredible place. And I will finish by showing you the scenery out there. Look at that the colors of the fall and look at the wall the walls had to be raised when this was a jail of course the original walls so we are really in a I was going to say almost in the middle of nowhere but this is what you would do I suppose if you started an abbey you wanted peace thank you friends wishing you all 
a very happy Thanksgiving if you are in the United States. And for those of you who are available on Friday at 6 p.m., I'll be live streaming for the start of the holidays from my city and tour. There's the kitchen in the background over there. A bientôt, France. Thank you for the stars. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.